Brunei, a simple, happy country. Few places in the world can match Brunei for its peace and serenity, its contentment. The discovery of oil some 30 years ago has transformed Brunei, but not spoiled its tranquility. The people still cling to their ancient customs, preferring a leisurely tempo of life to the hurly-burly of modern civilization. Across the water from Kampong A rise the gleaming concrete structures of the new township, symbols of progress and prosperity. In preparation for a historic week of festivities, Brunei takes on an air of gaiety. The whole town is decorated, streets with arches and houses with flags and bunting. Happy throngs pour in from far and near to take part in the celebrations, starting with the 42nd birthday of the ruler, His Highness Sir Omar Ali Saifuddin. Distinguished visitors and royalty begin to arrive. From Singapore, the Deputy Chief Minister, Dr. Abdul Hamid bin Haji Jumat. From the Federation, His Highness the Regent of Johor. His Highness the Sultan of Selangor. His Highness the Sultan of Pahang. His Excellency the Governor of Sarawak and High Commissioner for Brunei, Sir Anthony Abel. And then His Highness the Sultan of Brunei himself. After the royal salute, His Highness descends to the parade ground for an inspection of all units. The Brunei Police, the Royal Federation of Malaya Police, the Red Cross, Sea Scouts and Girl Guides, the Marine and Customs. Educated at the Malay College Kuala Kangsa, Sultan Sir Omar ascended the throne in 1950. An enlightened ruler imbued with a modern outlook, His Highness has tackled his country's development problems with courage and vision using the vast oil revenues of the state to improve living standards and to advance the general welfare of his people. At the end of the parade, His Highness takes the salute as all the contingents march past before the dais. at the Istana Darul Hana, over 50 people are honored by the Sultan at an investiture, including the royal visitors from the Federation. The packed throne room is a brilliant scene as one by one the royal guests enter with their retinues and take their seats. In a speech from the throne, His Highness expressed thanks to God for his bounty and blessings to the state. He said it was part of history that close ties existed between Brunei and the Federation, both in royal relationship and in the cultures of the peoples. He then confers the most esteemed family order on His Highness Sultan Abu Bakar, Sultan of Pahang. His Highness Sultan Hisamuddin Alam Shah, Sultan of Selangor. His Highness Tunku Ismail, Regent of Johor. Many civil servants and leading citizens are also honored for meritorious service to the state. After the investiture, the royal visitors, joined by the Raja of Palace and the Regent of Negri Sembilan, who arrived later, are guests of Brunei Shell Petroleum for an excursion to the Seria oil fields. Situated on the coastline south of Brunei town, Syria is one of the most productive oil fields in the Commonwealth, with over 300 producing wells, including those worked offshore. The Malayan rulers were greatly impressed by the size and complexity of the oil drilling operations, which go down to depths ranging from 800 to 7,500 feet, employing the most modern equipment in the world. Next, a visit to the company's trade school, which takes in selected students from Brunei and the other territories of British Borneo. With excellent facilities at their disposal, recruits are trained in three years to become skilled craftsmen and artisans.
A pleasant surprise awaited the royal visitors at the new Shell Recreation Club. Here, the rulers met many Malayans working in the oil fields, coming from their own states. Back in the capital, His Highness the Sultan of Brunei, as a signal mark of honour, is at the airport to extend a personal welcome to the Prime Minister of the Federation, Tunku Abdul Rahman, and to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence, Dato Abdul Razak. The Tunku, who is visiting the state for the first time, inspected a guard of honour formed by men of the Royal Federation of Malaya Police, serving in Brunei under a scheme of mutual assistance. After inspection, the visitors are introduced to prominent citizens and to government officials. An ancient ceremony begins at the Astana, the symbolic circumcision of Pangiran Muda Hasnal, heir to the throne of Brunei, and his brother, Pangiran Muda Muhammad, the two eldest sons of the Sultan. Richly dressed boys and girls sit on either side of the throne in front of the royal princes as the ancient rites in accordance with Muslim tradition are enacted before distinguished guests. The Sultan starts the ceremony by sprinkling scented water over his sons. He's followed by the guests, among whom are the High Commissioner for Brunei, the royal visitors and their consorts, the Federation's Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister. intoning prayers, the chief Kadhi of Brunei leads the princes out of the throne room, thus signifying the end of the ceremony. From the Astana, the princes, richly attired and wearing their gold crowns, are driven in state in an open car through the town for all to see. Escorted by bodyguards in ancient costumes and regalia, the procession moves slowly through the streets, lined with happy subjects, preceded by the Brunei and Sarawak police bands. Taking part in the procession are an impressive number of floats, some of them depicting colourful scenes from history and recalling the great days of a bygone era when Brunei was a powerful kingdom and empire. Along the waterfront and in boats near the river's bank, Crowds gather to watch the regatta. The race of pros is what everyone's waiting for, and cheers go out as the competing teams paddle their boats with all they've got. A test not so much of muscle and sinew as of speed and rhythm. At a second investiture, more Malayan royalty and leaders are honoured. His Highness the Sultan of Brunei bestows the most esteemed family order on His Highness Syed Putra, Raja of Perlis, and on Tunku Laksmana Munawir, Regent of Negri Sembilan. On the Prime Minister of the Federation, Tunku Abdul Rahman, his Highness confers the most honourable order of the Crown of Brunei, first class. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence, Dato Abdul Razak, receives the second class of the same order.
At a banquet held at the Astana, the Sultan leads his guests across the gaily decorated lawns to the banqueting hall. Over 500 guests from the neighboring countries of Sarawak and British Borneo, from Singapore and the Federation, and from many parts of the Muslim world are gathered together for this function. The next day, all is ready for the grand climax to the week-long celebrations, the opening of the Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque, Brunei's pride and symbol of a ruler's dream brought to reality. Glistening like a jewel in the tropical sun, the seven million dollar edifice towers over the capital, its picturesque Islamic architecture strikingly mirrored in the calm waters of the washing pool. From every part of the world, the best materials have been assembled, from the finest of Italian marble and mosaics to exquisite stained glass from Britain. Here's the mimbar or pulpit, surmounted by two golden domes. Four and a half years of loving toil and the labors of a thousand workmen have gone into creating this magnificent palace of worship. Beautiful stained glass windows, chandeliers, ornamental lighting, lavish interior decoration and color schemes. And between each pair of columns, a bronze plaque with inscriptions from the Holy Quran. Rising majestically 167 feet is the golden dome and minaret in which an electric lift has been installed to carry the muezzin to call the faithful to prayer. No expense has been spared to make the mosque one of the finest and most modern in the world, for it's the ardent wish of the Sultan that his country's wealth should contribute not only to the material advancement of the people, but also to the strengthening of the Muslim faith in Brunei. Thousands already fill the grounds of the mosque as ministers, rulers and official guests arrive for the grand opening. And finally, His Highness the Sultan, a proud and happy moment for this deeply devout man. Acknowledging the greetings of his happy subjects, His Highness walks up to the dais for the royal salute by the Guard of Honor formed by the Brunei police. After the inspection, His Highness takes his place with the guests in front of the main entrance of the mosque. On behalf of the people, Brunei's second minister thanks the Sultan for providing them with this grand place of worship. The Holy Quran is read by a religious dignitary, and when prayers have been said by the chief kapi of Brunei, His Highness is asked to perform the opening ceremony. awaited moment has arrived. As His Highness cuts the tape of state colors and as the huge bronze doors swing open, the hopes and dreams of the people are at long last fulfilled. Following their ruler, the excited crowd step reverently into the enormous carpeted hall of the mosque for the first time for Friday prayer. A great and important occasion for the people of Brunei, a milestone in their rich history. After prayers and the sermon, the enthusiastic worshippers, in a spontaneous demonstration of joy, crowd round their ruler and the Malayan visitors to kiss their hands as a sign of their regard and affection. During their short but crowded stay, the Prime Minister and Dato Abdul Razak took every opportunity of seeing as many Malayans as they could. One of their visits was to the Brunei Police Headquarters, where they met 103 members of the Royal Federation Police, 
serving in Brunei under a treaty agreement. Speaking informally, the Tunku told the men he'd heard of their high reputation among the local people. This is what it should be, he said, and I'm sure you will continue to give good service, not only as policemen, but also as ambassadors of the Federation. Malayans called on the Tunku at his residence to pay their respects and to hear the latest news from their homeland. Before returning, the Prime Minister with his deputy paid a courtesy call on the Sultan at his istana. At this friendly meeting, His Highness expressed his keen desire to send Brunei technicians and administrators to Malaya for training. Tunku Abdul Rahman welcomed the Sultan's suggestion and invited him to send as many persons as he wished. He said his government would be glad to do all it could to assist. In the evening, the whole of Brunei town is lit up for a final spree to mark the end of the rejoicings. Everywhere there are illuminations and entertainments as the people let themselves go in a night of fun and gaiety. as the lantern procession by school children and floats by the different communities weaves slowly through the town. is a glitter with lights as illuminated boats hold a procession of their own. Finally, the fireworks. A fitting climax to a momentous week. The people of Brunei can be justly proud for they've given new stature to their country. Darul Salam, the abode of peace.